One of the most popular elements of RuneScape is the ability to do something else while you're playing. Sometimes that might even be playing RuneScape on two accounts at the same time. But did you know that multitasking is not as straightforward as most people think it is? There are different ways that people conceptualize multitasking, but research in psychology tends to suggest that this might not be something that humans actually do, at least not very well. This video will help you understand if multitasking is actually a thing, the costs of multitasking, as well as talk about ways that might help you improve your ability to multitask to the extent that it exists. So let's start by getting this whole, is multitasking a thing, out of the way. I think for the average person, when they talk about multitasking, they believe they are genuinely doing multiple things at once. However, when psychologists study this, they find that the way that our brains actually work is a more single track style of thinking. That is, we may be doing multiple things, but only ever in a serial fashion. For example, let's say you're doing some work, but also playing RuneScape on the side. While you're working, your idle notification goes off for RuneScape, prompting you to click on the tree or whatever you are AFKing on the side. In that first moment, you were focused on working, and in the next moment, you were focused on figuring out what you need to click on in RuneScape. Two distinct tasks done in a serial fashion. After this, you might switch back to work, and then this is where things start to get tricky. You might already be saying, but I am doing two things. Well, through the psychologist's eyes, you're not doing two things at the exact same time, but rather are working on two things in an alternating serial fashion within a small time window. So technically speaking, multitasking does not exist. But I will continue to refer to this task switching nature as multitasking for simplicity's sake. This might not sound important for the average person. Again, you might be saying, so what? And this is where we need to talk about task switching costs. Task switching costs refer to the time and energy loss when switching from one task to another. Each time you switch between a task, the brain needs to adjust its perceptual systems and focus, as well as load context, rules, goals, and more for each of the things that you are working on. This happens each and every time you switch between these tasks. This is also sometimes referred to as set shifting. This can be highly disruptive to the flow of the brain's functioning. And even if it isn't highly disruptive, there is a definite time cost to this process. Even if that time is only a couple of seconds each switch, imagine how much time that adds up to across a day, a week, a month, or across all of the things that you do in your life. Research does suggest that with practice, or with a reduced cognitive distance between the tasks, you can reduce the amount of time cost. However, you can never entirely eliminate it. Another factor to consider here is that this sort of task switching for the brain is energy inefficient and can lead to decreased performance, increased fatigue, or even increased stress and irritability. It can also impact how we form new memories by decreasing the amount of information that we retain across the tasks we are switching between. One critical real-world example of where task switching costs can lead to bad outcomes, even fatal ones, is using your cell phone while driving. Even if you're constantly looking between your phone and the road while trying to send that text, it only takes a fraction of a second while looking at that phone for an accident to occur. Now I won't lecture you guys on this further, but please don't do anything else while driving or while doing anything else dangerous. It's really just not worth it. But an example from RuneScape might be while multi-logging, you let your hardcore die because you were trying to move over to that next motherload vein on one account at the very moment Vorkath spat out a fire blast on the other. Although there are these negative examples, there are also times where it can make reasonable sense to be playing RuneScape while doing something else. And despite the task switching costs, I'm guessing a lot of you are likely saying, well, a couple seconds or even minutes in my workday is something I can generally afford to lose for the sake of some extra XP. Or, I'm only trying to play two RuneScape accounts at once, so how do I improve at this so that I have the extra time to hit that like and subscribe button? Go on, try it. 
do it right now in practice. Because as I mentioned earlier, and as is the case with most things that we do, practicing and getting experience with multitasking can improve our ability to do it. While this is a rather obvious one, it might be helpful to give you a couple of examples. For your first time doing something like a fire cape or infernal cape, there is initially a lot of things that you have to serially check on, and when stress, exhaustion, or panic sets in, we can get distracted and miss that critical prayer flick. That's right, even playing one account at a time also incurs an amount of multitasking, as we have talked about it so far. Another great example is how good some of the RuneScape streamers are at talking to and banning their chats all while simultaneously not losing ticks. As someone who streams on occasion, twitch.tv slash keztv by the way, I can tell you firsthand that talking to the Kermit chatters and trying to do expert TOAs is a recipe for disaster for the uninitiated. But across time, I have definitely noticed that I am able to more smoothly manage chat and the game without as many major hiccups. That being said, practicing this might be a difficult task when you're trying to multitask RuneScape with something like work. I would suggest you don't compromise your obligations outside of the game to work on this, but that it is something you can build across time in those opportune moments. One other thing I have already mentioned was the cognitive distance between tasks. An easier way to conceptualize this might be selecting a task that is similar to what you are already doing, or making sure that both tasks are not overly difficult. So because RuneScape is such a unique task, it might be difficult to find something else that is close to it in this kind of cognitive distance. The best example might be when you're multi-logging, and if you're doing two different tasks, it will be the furthest in the distance, but if you were playing two accounts that were, say, woodcutting at the same time, then they would be fairly close. That being said, I still doubt you'll see two infernos run on two accounts anytime soon. There's likely an upper limit to this due to the complexity of the tasks at hand. One thing I would suggest here on the difficulty side of things is that if you're working on something complicated, say, a script about multitasking that definitely didn't take an extra two hours to write because I was nearly 90 runecrafting and also only getting 15k XP an hour, is that you try not to be doing something too complicated in RuneScape. Perhaps it might even be worth making a decision of putting dedicated focus into the complicated task in order to save yourself the excessive task switching costs from the extra cognitive distance. That way, you can finish the task as soon as possible with full power put into it so that you can return to full focused runescape as soon as possible as well. But if you're doing something more mundane, it might be an opportunity to also get some of that extra XP on the side. Essentially, try to figure out when and when you can't play runescape while doing something else. There will be times where it is just not worth it. One of the best indirect things that you can do for your multitasking ability is to increase your ability to control your attention and awareness in general. Now there are two types of things that I know that you could try for this. The first is a type of attention training called attention training technique. Now this comes from metacognitive therapy and it's primarily done through audio exercises that help you train your attention to shift between different sounds. There are free YouTube videos available for this and I will link the first of the series below. This might be something to try if you're interested in increasing your attention. In these videos, you will go through different stages such as selective attention, rapid attention shifting, and even divided attention sections. Cross time, this can help you train your attention in multiple ways, similar to training a muscle to be fully developed across all the different subsections of a muscle. The second type of thing you can do here is practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness is a form of meditation where you practice being in the present moment and again, learn to shift your attention. Most commonly, mindfulness focuses on the breath, but there are limitless forms of mindfulness, such as mindful walking, doing the dishes, doing laundry, eating, drinking, pretty much anything, if you can be doing it in the present moment, can be done mindfully. Now, it's a bit difficult to initially learn, it's even kind of hard to describe in a short video like this, but there are plenty of apps or free videos available that can help you learn this. I'll throw one of my favorite free mindfulness exercises in the description as well. 
So both of these techniques end up training your attention. When you have good control over your attentional abilities, this will end up benefiting your ability to multitask as your set shifting abilities will improve. There will be less extraneous information that the brain needs to load because the attentional systems will snap into place between each task quicker. These skills will also lead to more cognitive flexibility as well as many other benefits across time. This is especially the case for mindfulness, which has been shown to have many psychological and physical health benefits. I also want to take a second and just acknowledge some of the human factors or individual differences that go into our own multitasking abilities. Some factors that play into this are things like genetic potential, which cause some brains to be built in a way that just work at a higher clock speed of sorts, similar to faster processors. Some people will also have certain traits or conditions, so for example ADHD or some other cognitive difference that might impact their ability to perform set shifting or to focus in general, which can reduce their multitasking capabilities. Age is also a big factor. As we age, generally speaking, our abilities to multitask may decline. This is because our brains will slow down and change to a more crystalline sort of functioning. Although there is some research out there that shows cognitive flexibility can remain higher than natural decline if it is relevant to the individual. So again, practice will keep us somewhat resistant to this aging. And as a matter of fact thing, some people just aren't multitaskers, and that's okay. The efficiency grind set culture around RuneScape might make it seem like you can't get ahead in a sense because of this, but really forging your journey and playing the game in your own way is the entire purpose of it. And as long as you enjoy it, that is what is important at the end of the day. Although I presented ways to help improve multitasking, I'm in no way suggesting that this is how you should be playing the game. This was just for those that wanted to learn more about multitasking or wanted to learn ways to improve it. With that being said, I hope you did learn a bit from this video and found it enjoyable. What's your favorite thing to multitask RuneScape with? Do you have an example of where task switching costs led to a problem? Or maybe are you someone who prefers to not multitask the game at all? Let me know in the comments, and also while you're down there commenting, please consider giving the video a like and hitting the subscribe button if you're new. It really does help the channel grow, and we're rapidly approaching 1000 subs. For those of you who are interested, I started a Kez TV community discord the links in the description. It's very early days, but hoping to turn it into something cool and foster a fun, supportive, and healthy community with events and other opportunities for connection through RuneScape. I'm also planning to try and be live on Twitch tonight, sometime after 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, North American time. So if you're bored, pop by, say what up. I'll probably just be doing some Hell and Sepulcher or some other sort of skill as I'm working towards Max. For now though, Thank you all for watching, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.